Hey, Scott Spears here tonight with another edition of the Spears Report. Sorry if I look uh, terrible or sound terrible. I'm un in the midst of a um, some kind of disease. I don't know what it is. We'll hope I pull through, but if I don't, you'll have this little video log uh, to remember me by, but uh, I don't think you're done with me yet. I'm going to change uh, paces here in the video logs. Because I kind of want to talk about some experiences I've had, not so much, you know, ranting and raving as I have done, uh, just with celebrities, some local, some national, some situations I've been in doing the charity show or doing broadcasting. And the first one tonight I'm going to talk about, because you got to open big, I want to talk about Jimmy Crumb. Now, most people remember Jimmy Crumb, he was the WCMH uh, sportscaster for 40, 50 years. Uh, I remember him well from my childhood, famous for wearing the plaid jackets. Well, anytime anybody's asked me about Jimmy Crumb in the last five, ten years now, I guess it's been close to, I said I really don't care for the guy, but I wouldn't tell anybody why I don't care for the guy. Well, hey, if you tuned into this video log, you're going to know why I don't care for Jimmy Crumb. He's passed away now. It's been two or three years. I feel I'm okay to tell this story. Here's what happened. I was doing a charity event uh, for the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation back in 2004, I believe it was. And uh, we invited Jimmy Crumb to that event, and he very graciously came to that event. And uh, it was in December, and it was the turnout was not great. I'll be the first to admit it. The turnout was not wonderful, but Jimmy was he was okay. Uh, I thought during the trip we talked about having him back and things we could fix to make it better, and went out to dinner with him that night twice, and, and picked up his tab both times, and it seemed fine. And he left and went home, and so have you. So about six months later, I was planning the next charity show, and I had given Jimmy a call, letting him know that we were going to have uh, Doug Adair and uh, Angela Pace at this next charity show, and would love to have him come back and and uh, hopefully remedy some of the problems that uh, we had had in the previous charity show, and uh, again for Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, and... Uh, if people have been to my charity shows recently, uh, they know we've remedied those problems. But, in any event, I called Jimmy, left him a message, told him we had Angela Pace, Doug Adair, people he'd worked with before. Told him the date of the show and said uh, if he could make it, that'd be great. Would even be glad to send him some transportation because at that time I knew he wasn't doing too much driving. Um, so, so on and so forth. Certainly not 45 minutes. Well, a couple days passed, didn't get a hold of him, left the message, and I'll never forget this. I was laying on the couch on a Saturday morning, early Saturday morning, and the phone rings. It's like 8.30, Saturday morning. Phone rings. I didn't roll over to pick it up. I had to be at work later on that day. Really didn't think too much of it. I think I was working at a shoe store then and going to college long before ever getting in at uh, broadcasting, doing any kind of broadcasting. And the answering machine picks it up. Hey, it's Scott. Leave a message after the beep. And uh, this voice comes on. And understand, this is <laughs> this is exactly what it sounded like. Because I'm awake now. The phone's w woken me up. So now I'm hearing this message as I'm laying in bed 8.30 on a Saturday morning. Scott, this is Jimmy Crumb. I just wanted to let you know that I've placed a call to Doug Adair and I've placed a call to Angela Pace and told them not to come to your show. Scott, when you had me there last December, you tortured me. You embarrassed me and you tortured me. You gave me an award and it was cracked. I've never been so tortured in my life. Somebody should run you out of the town of Marion. Now, <laughs> and he ended the message, hand to God, he said, if you have any messages, call me back. 
<laughs> you know, after raking somebody like that, I would think you wouldn't uh, leave your number to call back. It was kind of, it kind of made his point. Um, first I'd heard of it, though. Six months later, and the first time he'd brought it up. Now, I will say this. The, war, the award was not cracked. I don't know how you crack an award. Uh, not really sure what he was talking about there. And number two... Um, Yes, it is. Oh, I remember the line. I came there and I looked out in that audience and I only saw ten people, Scott. I was tortured. Now, I don't know if there was ten people there or not. I'm sure there were more than ten people in the auditorium that night. But the question begs, if Jimmy Crumb is your main draw and you can't draw more than ten people, maybe the problem does not lie with me. Maybe the problem lies with Jimmy Crumb. Um... I tried to apologize to Jimmy many times because I figure when you invite somebody to your house, which I did for my charity event, and they have a rotten time, you want to try to make that better, fix it in some way, and, and Jimmy just would not have that. Jimmy held that grudge from 2004 until the day he died. He did not want anything to do with me. He thought I was just a, a horrible, horrible person. And I always felt bad about that because I liked Jimmy Crumb and I thought his Tell It Like It Is style was kind of interesting. But when you're doing a charity show that you're not taking any money from, we've done 14 of them now, and I, you don't benefit in any way except for giving the money to charity. And, and Jimmy Crumb should have known that better than anybody for all his work at Recreation Unlimited, which I certainly applaud. But you take what you can get. When the, when the charity doesn't do well, you're upset. But uh, you don't give up. You come back and you do it again. And now that we're at 14 and have raised, you know, a little bit of money for, for charities, American Cancer Society, Juvenile Diabetes Foundation, I certainly don't think I should be run out of the town of Marion since I was here longer than Jimmy Crumb ever was. So that answers the question. Why don't you like Jimmy Crumb? Well, that's why I don't like Jimmy Crumb. Uh, once again, I'm sure a lot of people liked him, but... Uh, that's how he was to me. And a little sidebar to this, so I'm, I'm just not sure that I'm the only person he disliked. I'm not going to say the name of the person, but I was told later that right after the show, before anything had happened, somebody came up and, and just wanted to see how Jimmy Crumb was and said, Jimmy, how you doing? And his reply was, my wife's dead and I've got cancer. How do you think I'm doing? So Jimmy might have been in a bad mood when he got there. But the fact that he never let that grudge die was always upsetting to me, and and I wish we could have patched it up before he passed away, but we really never did. Um, but I guess maybe that's who he was. He was a curmudgeon. Jimmy Crumb, the curmudgeon. But that was an experience I certainly will never forget. <laughs>